Om Namah Shivaya. This is the journalistic coup of my life. Well, let me walk you through this. I mean, Eight Finger Eddie himself, at the ancient turtle age of 83, is walking me over to the first house he rented in Anjuna Beach, to Francis Rodriguez's house. Wow, there's the well, the ruins, Eddie's porch, oh, David and Sherry's house. Oh. Eddie scuffles along carefully. Mm, those coconut tree roots uh, wreak havoc with him, falls from time to time. Yeah. Whoops. Eddie remembers he forgot his fruit salad, bag of Joe bananas, so uh, he turns around to go. and I watch him from the back. Hmm. Bean stick, uh, bean stalk uh, legs, they're thin, and uh, I'm afraid he's not going to be on the planet too much longer. That's why I'm here. That's why I flew from San Francisco to interview him. Yeah. Mm. Sandy Pass, very challenging. Eight finger Eddie. Plain worn out. What a life, huh? Worn out, too worn out to walk to the beach anymore, which is like two minutes away. I used to play handball, be quite athletic. Well, uh, 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 Eddie says bum bum as he shuffles away back towards Joe Bananas, and he walks past the sign that says Joe Bananas. It looks like a nice photo for my book, which, is, which it is in, in the book. And uh, I didn't know at the time, but this was the nat last moment that I ever saw Eight Finger Eddie alive. And our goodbye is nothing special. Well, Francis Rodriguez, yeah, a unique character in hippie history of Gaul. And uh, I luxuriate in a casual conversation with him on his beautiful front porch. His veranda is so elegant. Mm-hmm. Take out my notepad and pen. <laughs> Dogs like licking my hand. Francis recalls I worked in Tanzania, and uh, yeah, I rented uh, Eddie's people my house uh, through my caretaker for five dollars a month. And I returned to Anjuna Beach to my home here ten years later in 1979, and uh, lived with my two beautiful daughters and son and wife and. The dog, yeah. Francis recalls uh, when the Portuguese left, 1961, and, hit, you know, five, six years later, here come the hippies. And the Goans really appreciated the uh, inflow of extra cash. Uh, it, it, it really upgraded their living standards. Uh, what Francis didn't like was the drugs that the Western hippies brought into their going culture. Francis uh, summarizes, uh, he's so mellow. <laughs> now, uh, everything is cool and calm. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'll call this interview a wrap. Uh, <laughs> dogs nuzzling my ribs. Uh, I trip many times right here in this house. <laughs> Francis, oh yeah. And I drew this huge psychedelic map of the Arabian Sea. Uh, I was planning on sailing as a stateless person to Mombasa. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I noticed the floors, beautifully hardwood, uh, tongue and grove, beautiful. Uh, raised Portuguese furniture, seems so crowded. You know, so European. Uh, we used to, we had no furniture, and uh, we used to roll around on the floor. We lived on the floor, and I, I still kind of live on the floor. Uh, you know, I'm doing my work uh, cross-legged on my bed and uh, on my laptop. I love living close to earth. And what the Goans did, they had a technique where they would take fresh cow dung spread it over the earth, you know, make an earthen cow dung floor, coat that uh, floor slightly to kind of seal it, and it was totally antiseptic to flies. Flies would not land on This made the scene very hygienic, 
and no odor. Yeah, no furniture on the... <laughs> yeah, we love to play music. That's what we did. Uh, we had no electricity. Uh, we made our own music every day, every night. Uh, drums, flutes, maybe a harmonium, cymbals, uh, tambourines, conch shells, and guitars. Oh, in instruments we invented. You know, I'd pound on anything, string up <laughs> any kind of thing. We were pure gypsies. Yeah, yeah. Well, I photographed the interior of the home, all that furniture. Uh, how could freaks have any fun in here? Roll around, crash, dance. Yeah. In, back in the day, in the animal stall behind the kitchen, we milked our two goats. They had these oval eyes, kind of like the devil, huge green uh, oval eyes, higher from top to bottom than side to side. <laughs> and papaya trees in the backyard, which are wonderful because they grow all year round. They're, they just never stop producing. And banana trees. Yeah. And once a week, one of us would walk to where you could get a bus to Mopsa, 11 kilometers away, to the market town, have a market day especially, and we'd load up on everything that we could not get from Joe Bananas. Uh, our guidebook was Back to Eden, and, uh, you know, lots of lemons, avocado, garlic, and that was our Mopsa market run for the week. 